What are you saying, ladies and gents? It is your boy, Bukat Sam, and we are back again today for another video. Today's video is a special video. I am doing my most underrated Premier League 11 right now, this very second. But before we get into it, please do smash the like button and do subscribe. We're trying to get 4K subscribers on the channel before the new year, and we are close. We, we can do it. So just smash that subscribe button right this very second. It helps more than you can imagine. Anyway, let's get right into it. So we'll start off with the goalkeeper. Now, by the way, this is my opinion, so let me know your team down below. I'm going to go straight in with Robert Sanchez. Now, I think he is took to Chelsea life like a duck to water. I think he started so well. Currently, right now, he's in the top five goalkeepers for the highest save percentages. He's got the second most clean sheets in the league. And considering Chelsea haven't got off to the best of starts under Pochettino, I think he's shone, to be honest. I think he's looked very good. I think we kind of, we all knew he'd be a good goalkeeper because obviously he did really well at Brighton. But I think the tricky thing was a bit, but he did fall out of out of place towards the end. He fell out with Graham Potter. De Zerbe didn't really fancy him, ended up dropping him. And it was a bit of a question mark, so how good was he? Because he's still obviously a very young goalkeeper, but he's been really good at Chelsea. I think he starts all the attacks, he's commanding. I really like him. Overall, I think he's a very good goalkeeper. I think he's gone under the radar so far this season because he's already got three clean sheets, which considering how poor Chelsea have been really to start off with, I think he's probably been one of their, their positive signs to the start of this season. Now on to the right back. Now this is a player that I think is underrated purely down to the fact that he has had Probably the biggest switch up, the biggest improvement when we compare it to last season. And I don't think it's talked about enough. I'm going for Pedro Porro. Now, I think the big thing about this is because I remember um, in the uh, in Europe last season when um, I think it was Tim Sherwood spoke about it on Sky Sports when the game was coming in saying it's one of the worst performances he's ever seen from a Tottenham right back. He talked about the fact that he defensively wasn't good enough, positionally unaware. He struggled under Conte. Um, and he just he didn't really like, look like a very good player at all. You kind of thought, what on earth have they signed here? He didn't look going good going forward. He didn't look very good defensively. And it was always said that he was a wing back rather than a full back. So he's gone into this back four this season and he's completely revolutionised his, himself. He's completely, he's a new player. He looks confident. He's getting assists. He's bombing on forward. And I think he looks really, really good defensively as well. I think he's been a really good positive sign for Tottenham and just highlights the impact when a manager comes in, a coach can change can change a player, can change everything about it. I think he sums up Tottenham's change, if you get what I mean, of how much an improvement he's had compared to last season. Now on to the centre-backs. Now the first centre-back I'm going for is Lewis Dunk. Now, if you watch my channel, if you watch the podcast, which is called Book Out Sam Talks Ball Podcast, it's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, go check it out now and give it a five-star review. I talk about Lewis Dunk all the time now. Lewis Dunk, is, it blows my mind when you look at Lewis Dunk and the fact that how much he has changed with the times. We talk about Lewis Dunk and we, we think about it. Lewis Dunk was playing and was captain of this Brighton side when they first came up. He was playing under Chris Hewton. And he kind of, before it was kind of, he was a good defender, but he was known for his uh, tenacity, his heading ability, and the fact that he could break up play. He was never really discussed and spoken about as an actual technical technical footballer. Whereas now he's playing in this deserve side and played in this Potter side. And he's probably one of the best ball-playing centre-backs in the league at the moment. And not only that, look, he's... He, he survived, and you think about the other centre-backs that have come and gone in that Brighton side, he has stayed there, he has been the main man for Brighton for so long, he looks so good, I really, really like him, and I think he is so good for that side, he's massively underrated, I think he really should be starting for England, on form, um, and then the other centre-back, I'm going for Thiago Silva, now, again, now this is an interesting one, because a lot of people may say, well, Thiago Silva's not, he's, he's, isn't underrated, like he's perfectly rated, and I think the reason why is because he's come under a lot of harsh criticism this year. A lot of people have really been getting onto his back about his performances and things like that. And he's been saying, I don't mind the pressure on me. But I think he's been really unfairly and harshly treated this season. I don't think he's been the problem in that defence. I think he's done very well considering when you look at the amount of changes, he's one of the only players that was playing there last season. One of the only players that's got experience in this team. And I think he's gone under the radar. I think he's been a very good defender again this season. Again, you kind of know what he does. He, he, considering his age, it's mad how he's still playing at this level, playing at this standard. I think he's had a very good season, and I think he's really been harshly criticised and spoken about about how he's fallen off, he's getting too old and things. So I think in that, it, under that reason, I think he's underrated. Uh, now on to the left back. I'm going for Solly March. Now Solly March has been absolutely unreal. Now we talk about players again who have survived in this Brighton side. He came up originally playing under Chris Hewton, was playing as a left mid, and slowly now he's been kind of been pushed back as playing a bit of a left back. I think he's been really good this season. I think he's looking so strong. And every week I watch him and he gets stronger and stronger and stronger and just seems to improve. And I don't know how. Like He's kind of a player that doesn't really excite you, but 
he seems to always get assists, he gets goals, and he just offers so much a player that, again, I cannot believe he can play in this side. Like, you talk about the players that have survived all that time to end up playing in this Brighton side that's so gifted, technically. It's just crazy. And we know it's not that easy for a player to move from a left midfield to drop back into left back. It usually happens with players when they're coming to the end of their career. But I think he looks really good in it. And I think he kind of is, it plays as if he's always been a left back. Really surprisingly good. Now on to the midfield. Now we're starting off with Longstaff for Newcastle. He's been so, so good. And I think the big thing about this is... The impact when he's dropped, like it kind of really goes unnoticed. I saw a stat that you win, they've Newcastle have won more games when he's been in the side, and that is crazy to think about it. When you think about the midfield that they've got, when you talk about the likes of Tonali, you talk about Bruno Gimmeres, those are both very good dif- midfielders. But kind of Longstaff goes unnoticed. You talk about Longstaff, he scored against Paris Saint Germain, he played in the San Siro. Like this guy is absolutely unreal, but because it's not the most attractive of names and it's kind of got the jokes and the, the memes that go with it, I think. He's not spoken about enough and the impact he has on this Newcastle side, so I think he's been absolutely amazing and I think he's very underrated. Now onto the other midfielder. I'm going for Bruno Fernandes. Now, this is one that I know people are going to be like, what are you on about? But Bruno Fernandes, for me, is probably arguably one of the, if not the best, uh, number 10 in this league. Now, I know you've got the likes of Madison, you've got the likes of De Bruyne, you've got the likes of Odegaard. But I think one thing that really highlights the importance to this Man United side and the, the impact that this player has, if you listen to a, an interview with Kevin De Bruyne, he gets spoken and he gets asked a question, where to rate between Madison, Odegaard and De Bruyne. Oh, sorry, Madison, Odegaard and Bruno Fernandes. And De, uh, De Bruyne instantly puts Bruno Fernandes at number one and says, this guy... His contributions-wise, his output is insane. And that is one thing I think that really goes under the radar with Bruno Fernandes because, obviously, he's got a lot of... A part of his game, and he has the like the general demeanour. He's moaning and the diving and things like that. And the people that, that people don't like, and he's quite nasty. Sometimes he can leave a little bit in. The s housery that's what we call it. But I think his actual output is a joke. And, like, his goal-scoring opportunities he creates is ridiculous. Like, you think about Odegaard. Odegaard is kind of like a technically gifted footballer, drops in, he does all the nice things. Madison, very similar, taking the ball in deep. Bruno Fernandes is just literally an output machine. Like, he just makes key passes and creates big chances. That's all he does. Like, it as an actual impact, it's an absolute joke. And you think about the, the goals and the assists he's had since he came uh, to the Premier League is a joke. And I think because he set himself such high standards now, I think it's gone under the radar. So for me, Bruno Fernandes is arguably, right now, fit, is a number 10. The most effective and efficient number 10 is probably him. Now, I prefer, I like Madison, I like Odegaard, and I know they have different different inputs. I'm not saying he's better than those two players, but I'm talking about actual direct output. Bruno Fernandes is a joke, and he's shone in this Man United side and pretty much carried them on his back since he joined. Because let's be honest, it's not been a great side since he's joined, but he has single-handedly carried that team, and he's now ended up being the captain. I think he's so good. And for some reason, he doesn't get spoken about. Like, what if you put the debate to people, Odegaard, Madison, De Bruyne, Fernandes. Fernandes will just get put straight at the bottom instantly. And I don't know why that is. Let me know if you disagree or agree with me. Now on to the centre mid, I'm going for Pascal Gross. Now, Pascal Gross is another player we talk about. He was signed for less than 5 million all those years back from Brighton, for Brighton. And he has been so, so good. And this guy isn't spoke about enough. We talk about Brighton and how good they are and all the the, 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 the positivity with Brighton and things. This guy is Mr. Brighton along with your likes of Solly March and Lewis Dunk. He has transitioned with this side moved on forward. But not only that, this guy from centre midfield is now officially... Brighton's all-time Premier League goal scorer. So we talk about Brighton, how great a squad they are, how great a side they are. But this guy is that literally the highest goal scorer. But for some reason, he's not spoken about when you talk about the best players at Brighton. Maybe because, again, it's not as attractive to say that, but I honestly think he is so, so good. And he's probably been unlucky because I know he's been in that Brighton zone. He's probably at the right level, but now he's actually playing in European competitions and things, which is definitely what he should be doing because he's such a good player. Kind of really goes under the radar. Yes, I know he doesn't get loads of minutes, but whenever he, whenever he does... Whenever he does play, he's very effective. I really, really like him. So yeah, Pascal Gross is my other sentiment. Now onto the right wing, uh, we have got Jared Bowen. Now, the reason why I'm underrating uh, Jared Bowen now, because I know a lot of people are like, what are you on about Jared Bowen's amazing? Everyone knows he's perfectly rated. But he's been given that huge big contract. And I hear the likes of Mark Goldbridge and other creators talking about Jared Bowen being overrated. But this guy's a goal-scoring machine. You talk about the numbers that he's putting up from right wing for that side in West Ham is a joke. When he was at Hull City and he first moved, uh, he taught at the Championship. I remember him absolutely battering my team, West Brom. I remember thinking, he's good, but I don't think he's Premier League quality. He has come and been an absolute joke. And the reason why he's underrated is because when we talk about the best wingers, 
he should. I'm not saying he's as good as the likes of Saka, but he can at least be in that conversation. He should be in that conversation. He's not as good, but he should be in the debate. Like the debate should be happened. I think he's better than the likes of Kulusevski. But if you said that. You'd get absolutely slaughtered online. I think the guy's a joke. His output is insane. He pretty much plays. The only player I can compare him to realistically is Mo Salah. Obviously, Mo Salah's on another level. But when I watch Jared Bowen, he cuts in on that left and he scores nonstop. He, he doesn't really play as a right winger. It's more as a right forward, isn't it? Let's be honest. His output, again, is a joke. So, yeah, Jared Bowen for me on that right-hand side. Now, onto the left-hand side, we're going for Pedro Neto. Now, Pedro Neto has got off to an absolute flying start for Wolves this season. And obviously, in recent years, he's had a, some really bad injuries. But we all knew there was a player in there. But... Right now, he's putting up some serious numbers already. He's got the most assists in the league already this season. In a struggling Wolves side as well, it's ridiculous. Like This guy, we all know it, and we've all said it before. He should be playing at a higher level than Wolverhampton Wanderers, let's be honest. like The guy carries that Wolves team on his own in a Wolves side that right now, it's not too positive. Like the, the, the squad, it's not great football and things like that, but he's like their shining light. He is, their, he is their output. He is everything that is good and positive about the Wolves. He pretty much drags the team up the pitch on his own, driving runs, creating chances, taking on players, and thousands of celebrations. If you haven't seen that clip, go look at the Luton game and uh, when he scores that goal, when he does about 20 celebrations. Very, very funny. And now on to the striker. Now, a player that I absolutely love, and I speak about him all the time on my podcast, it is Carlton Morris at Luton. Now, this guy... I remember watching him play for Barnsley. So the season that he, uh, Barnsley went down from the championship, he went to Luton. I was watching uh, Luton versus Barnsley at Ken Kenilworth Road and he scored an absolute wonder goal. And I thought, this guy's a handful. Luton went off the back of that and then went and signed him. And then last season, he absolutely tore it up in the championship. And I thought, you know what? I'm intrigued to see how he does next season. This season, he has started so well. He's Luton's top goal scorer and he looks like the only man in that Luton side who's going to put the ball in the back of the net. He looks so good. He's, he, he's very good on the ball. He's coming in deep, linking up with play. He, He's an absolute brute force. He can hold the ball up. He can really do everything you'd want from a, a striker. And I genuinely believe that if Luton go down, this guy is, is, is good enough for any side in the bottom half. Like you're talking like your Crystal Palace is down pretty much. Your Everton, everyone like that. Like I'm not saying he's going to be in like in going into Europe in one of those sides. But I think he's very, very good. Like I, I think he could easily get... I think he'll get 10 plus goals this season, which is amazing really from a side that's just come up from the championship. I really, really like him. Yeah, very underrated player. So I'll do a quick summary now of my team for you. So my underrated Premier League 11 right this very second. In goal, we've got Robert Sanchez. This guy's got the second most clean sheets in the league and he's in the top five save percentages in the league. And I think he's taken to Chelsea like a duck to water. One of the only positive signs for Chelsea this season. Then on to right back, we're talking about Pedro Porro, probably one of the most improved players in the league. He was written off last year under Antonio Conte. And this year, even in a back four, he's looking so strong. Then my two centre-back pairings, we've got Lewis Dunk. This guy has gone from Chris Hewton being an absolute brute force, head it, kick it, try really hard defender to a player now who's a ball-playing player. Not only that, he's probably one of the most technically gifted defenders right now in the league, but I'll get loads of stick for saying that. And then my other centre-back, Thiago Silva, this guy is in his late 30s and he's still absolutely killing it. And I think he's getting so unharshly, so harshly criticised this season by Chelsea fans. Then on to left-back, we've got Solly March. This guy has gone from a left-mid to left-back like it's absolutely nothing. Not only that, he's doing it in a Brighton side, which looks so good. And he has been so good this season. Now onto my midfield three, we have got Pascal Gross, Brighton's all-time top goal scorer in the Premier League. He is such a good player and really doesn't get spoken about enough. Then we've got Bruno Fernandes, the output king. I think he he kind of is really underrated in the fact that he doesn't seem to be ever get the, the applaud it's like all the other number 10s do in the league when you talk about your Madisons, your Odegaards and players like that. He never seems to be put on that level when really, he really he's absolutely carried Man United for the last few seasons. So in my opinion, he's underrated. And then to the other centre-back, we've got Longstaff for Newcastle. I can't believe in a midfield of Tonali, Gimaresh, that Longstaff is still holding his own and still standing up for himself. And he's actually, to be honest, be, probably been one of the most effective midfielders for Newcastle in the league this year. Now onto the front three. On the right-hand side, we've got Jared Bowen, the output king. This guy scores ridiculous amount of goals from that right-hand side. He pretty much plays as a right forward. He's been a joke for so many seasons. For some reason, people don't put him up there with one of the most effective players in the league when realistically he is. Then onto the left-hand side, we've got Pedro Neto. He's been unlucky with injuries in the last few seasons, but this season he's been so, so good. Assist king this year. And for some reason, 
I can't believe he's never left the walls, to be honest. He easily could be in a top 10 side in the Premier League. And now to the striker, we're going for Carlton Morris. Luton's top goal scorer. A lot of people questioned how he would take to the Premier League. He was very good for them in the Championship last season. He's come to the Premier League and he's he's played so well. He's Luton's shining light. He's the bright spark in that team and looks like the only player who can score. And he does absolutely everything you'd want from a striker. So there you go. That is my team. Let me know now in the comment section below what you think of my Premier League under 8-11. Thank you for watching. And please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Peace.